is a reverse orbit and why is it killing young throwers and their throws? We're gonna talk about it in this video, so check it out. Everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation, and in today's YouTube video, what we're going to discuss is the reverse orbit. Now, this happens to be a common thing that I see quite a bit, and there's a number of things that cause it, but it's super important to understand how we set an orbit. And one of the things that we talk about in the throwing chain reaction is that we're always trying to set that orbit and we're setting that orbit right here at the start. This is why we talked about in some of our other videos, we avoid the, the figure eight wind, we avoid multi winds. We wanna be really conscious of how we set up the path and that's really one of the core principles in the throwing chain reaction system. We're trying to teach that whatever action we really kind of set up is what's going to dictate your entire throw. So if you set the wrong orbit right from the start, it's gonna be really difficult to correct that. Are there people who do and people who have unique orbits? Yes, like looking at Perez from Cuba, she's a perfect example, she's got all kinds of arm movement but if you really look she hits the orbit really good or really well at all the right points so it's kind of a point where some people look at it and there's all this extraneous arm motion, but she's hitting the orbit and it's working very well for her. She throws consistently far. So the thing that we want to focus on, what we want to understand is that where the arms are, so we generally are going to be keeping everything level, and that's what's gonna help what we talked about in our high point video. We wanna get the high point correct. And that reverse orbit is one of those things that we see. So when you start out and that orbit starts, this is why we usually start with the disc is higher. Now it can start lower. There have been throwers in history that carry that discus lower, like John Powell, one of the best American throwers in history, and he had a lower carry, but he would get that discus to an extreme extremely, you know, an excellent high point, and that's what's going to be really critical about that orbit. But what we're talking about is the reverse orbit, and the reverse orbit is what makes it next to impossible to get yourself into the throw properly, and it's going to create shift. You're going to lose the delivery side leg, and again, we talked about this in the high point. But in this video, we specifically wanted to address why and go kind of show a couple of examples of how that low point orbit. So if I'm throwing again in this direction, and you see see me coming in and that arm's coming up and this low point's coming down, you're gonna see how everything's gonna shift and that discus catches right up to the hip. Now, you'll see this sometimes in the rotational shot as well, and when you see a rotational shot putter, but what you'll see is they'll tend to get this kind of orbit, and in the shot, the rotational shot, we wanna keep a flatter orbit that we're gonna stay on top of the axis, and we'll talk about that in another video. Referring to with the reverse orbit is that when we see the arms and everything going here, it's also gonna change how the axis works, and now there's a disconnect, it's not a fluid motion of how the, uh, the lower body and the upper body are gonna be angling into the sprint. So sometimes when you see the cue of holding the chest back and getting up, I understand again what the point and the objective is and what I again will always argue is that a highly intuitive athlete will kind of feel that cue more specifically and then a younger athlete who's maybe not as body aware or strong will feel this same type of thing and they're gonna get really into this type of a position and they're not gonna generate the right type of speed and what it's gonna do is they're going to be sitting and they're not going to be sprinting into the circle. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when we hit the high point, as we come around from pillar one to two, we're gonna see that discus, you're gonna notice it's gonna come down slightly as the thrower kind of goes in and they turn, that's our pillar three, four. We're gonna see that high point and we wanna be here. So by the time we arrive here, you're gonna notice that the hips are directly under me and that's what's gonna allow me to pull this out. This has to be able to get here so I can pull that. So as you come in and you hit that high point, and now you'll notice that again, my hips are back under me and I'm gonna be able to push, right? And you're gonna notice that. This is gonna be another video. We'll show you our heel up and push drill. But as we pushing that, we're accelerating that ahead and we're stretching 
the arm and we're getting that big pull. And that's why if we look in our push-pull video of where we're showing push versus pivot, how that's going to influence that real big dynamic sling and delivery, tie in things like understanding how to work your block, all that kind of thing is how you're gonna begin to hit massive throws really quick. That is the whole point of our throwing chain reaction. If you don't know what the throwing chain reaction is, be sure to click the link in the description for our free mini course. You can fill that out, you get weekly tips, and you can get your choice of a rotational throws or glide or both. Learn more specifically of how the six pillars work and gives you a better understanding of structuring the throw. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to comment below on future things you'd like to hear or see or discussed. We will see you on the next video. Thanks so much. One of the core things we want to do with the weight room is that we want to be including our Olympic lifts and that means you have to put a technical focus on your training.